Truth Espresso, Episode 9. Face it, we all would rather sleep in this morning. <sighs> That's why God gave us espresso, to kickstart our zombified corpses into hyperdrive. <laughs> And now, giving your mind and soul the morning shot of truth it craves. <sighs> this is Truth Espresso with Daniel Minnick. Hello, friends. This is Daniel Minnick, and this is episode eight of Truth Espresso. If you listen to the last episode of Truth Espresso, episode seven, you would remember that episode seven talked a little bit about six superpowers of introverts. Now, as I mentioned several times in the last episode, that episode was for entertainment purposes. Um, maybe not only, but it was for entertainment purposes. One of the reasons I tried to give a bunch of what I called superpowers for introverts was to help out the introverts like myself who might feel a little bit suppressed in society. And so I thought it would be a little bit entertaining and a little bit of fun to kind of promote being an introvert, talk about the advantages of introverts, and maybe take a few little entertainment-driven jibes at the extroverts. So... As I mentioned in the last episode, I probably will have to balance things out a bit and eventually record an episode that is about the advantages of extroverts, really letting the extroverts get a shot at defending themselves and show why they are not inferior to introverts. Now, it's probably not super hard to talk about the advantages of extroverts, but I promised that I would do that. And so, this episode is entitled Revenge of the Extroverts. So, I did compare in the last episode extroverts to vampires and leeches. If anyone was offended by that, I apologize, but I, cap I captioned quite a few times that this was for entertainment purposes. And I will reiterate again, these episodes about introverts and extroverts and their advantages and disadvantages are for entertainment purposes. I will say it again. These are for entertainment purposes. I will say it again. These are for entertainment purposes. In case you missed it, um, these episodes are for entertainment purposes. So in the last episode, I claimed that introverts were likely to be better listeners. They were likely to be independent. They were more likely statistically to be humble. They were more likely to be frugal with their money. And introverts were likely more to be adaptable to the needs of, of society. Now, in this episode, Revenge of the Extroverts, the tables are going to turn. So, as I turn the tables and let the extroverts not speak for themselves, because I'm speaking for them, but I researched several articles that were written by extroverts about extroverts, for extroverts, talking about the advantages of extroverts, Maybe my speaking for extroverts is really just a conduit, a proxy for letting extroverts speak for themselves. So here we go. I have a list of five advantages of extroverts. Number one, they are more likely to be happier. Yes, statistically speaking, extroverts are more likely to be happier. How do we know this? Well, we go to psychologytoday.com, and in a, um, an article actually from this year entitled The Secrets of Happiness, uh, 
This article, The Secrets of Happiness, says that generally extroverts are happier, which results in being mentally happier, uh, which results in improving physical health. And uh, I noticed that there were... uh, a study showing facial expressions, the standard facial expressions of introverts tend to either look blank or maybe have their mouth shifted more downward into a slightly sad-looking position, at least in comparison to extroverts. And extroverts generally had a smile, at least a partial smile, plastered on their face. And that reflects the heart of extroverts, that they're usually happier inside and... um, as I uh, mentioned in the last episode, in Vindicating Introverts, I provided Bible verses to defend the traits of introverts. And so, extroverts, here is a good verse for you on being happy. Proverbs 17 and verse 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. So, the Bible is very clear that being happy not only is an outward thing, but it also affects the inward person. It affects, it improves the entire person. The body, the mind, the soul, the spirit, and a merry, if a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, um, maybe a lot of introverts who struggle with being happy because they feel like they're not part of a, a part of society proper, they can feel a broken spirit that drieth the bones. Now, what helps introverts is the drive to succeed in whatever endeavor they're trying to do. If they feel like they can't accomplish what they want to accomplish, then they might encounter that broken spirit which drieth the bones. So, if introverts struggle with happiness, it can affect their physical well-being too. But extroverts, have the upper hand here where they are generally naturally statistically more happy and therefore that could lead to maybe living longer maybe living a more fulfilling life even when things are might be equal for them or for ex or for introverts extroverts might generally look at life as something that's just naturally more fun because they're excited about doing things with other people. So number one was that extroverts are likely more happier. They are more likely happier. And number two, extroverts are outwardly at least more likely to be outwardly health conscious. Now, let's just take the obvious here. If an extrovert likes to hang around people and socialize, not only does an extrovert's uh, speech come into consideration, an extrovert's um, uh, the what they want to say and how much of it they want to say and how many activities they might want to be involved with, with... Uh, people, extroverts are likely to self-reflect on their outward image. Not only do they want to have a smile on their face and make their face look bright and cheery, but extroverts are more likely to be concerned with their outward appearance all around. If there's pre- if there are pressures from society to be healthy and look healthy and look fit, Extroverts are more likely to take those concerns to heart. They are more likely to be concerned with their public image, and that will likely more pressure them to live a healthier lifestyle. The social need of an extrovert naturally leads to uh, cooperating when it comes to exercise. Let's just take the, um, the example of going to a gym. I mean, a few years ago, I did go to a gym and I did employ a, uh, a trainer. And 
I would have to say that with a trainer there telling me, uh, giving me the exercises to do and telling me, push harder, push harder, come on, you can do it, push harder, that actually helped me do a lot more pushing on the weights. Um, And so even if you don't employ a physical trainer at a gym, there are benefits to accountability partners. And if if two um, work out together, there is the motivation for both of them to keep up with the other one, keep up with their promises, and keep on going until they both decide to stop. And so, and cheerleaders really help. Someone who's cheering you on, telling you, come on, you can do it. Come on, just a little bit further. Keep going. You got this, man. That that uh, trait that extroverts would likely um, bring on for uh, getting exercise in pairs or in groups and not just um, alone can lead to greater ease of motivation to get more physical exercise. Whereas with an introvert who's trying to stay alone and just... Um, do his own or his her own weight routine or treadmill or uh, take a walk if if uh, an introvert just bows to the pressure of feeling really tired or not motivated what's going to stop the introvert from just stopping the routine and ending the resolution and and just um, discarding the whole idea of trying to get into a healthier state Now consider this scenario. Who is more likely to grab a bag of chips alone and start chomping away with abandon and end up eating more than a fair share, the introvert or the extrovert? Whereas an extrovert who's concerned with public image, an extrovert might want to go grab the chips or the ice cream, but the extrovert, just like with the exercise scenario, the extrovert might look for a partner who is also down in the dumps with him or her to go um, chomp away and fellowship or eat away at scoops of ice cream out of the carton or something like that. Um But if the extrovert doesn't find someone to do that, the extrovert might not be as likely to just indulge in the shadows as an introvert might be. So extroverts have the advantages here. Number one, extroverts more likely are happier. Number two, out there more likely to be outwardly health conscious and concerned with their public image. And so now we move to advantage number three for extroverts. And this has to do with success in business. So an extrovert likes to talk and with a lot of people and get to know a lot of people and have relationships with a lot of people. To an extrovert, there is no stranger. There are only friends. And so... Businesses love to use this skill of extroverts in customer relations and call centers. And um, as extroverts reach out, um, they will likely get more clients, which leads to more business, which leads to greater sales. Uh, Entrepreneur.com has an article entitled, Do Extroverts Have an Advantage in Entrepreneurship? Well, it seems like statistically extroverts indeed do have a greater advantage with being entrepreneurs. Extroverts are statistically more willing to take risks and jump into uh, situations. And if the risk pays off and the reward is big, extroverts are usually the first to get that reward. And as extroverts... um, will build bigger social circles. That means more contacts, more clients for business, more money earned, 
leads to greater promotions for extroverts and greater pay raises in pay, whereas an introvert who might be equal in every other respect may not have that drive that has to do with getting other people to pay attention and get other people to do things. An introvert is more likely concerned with self-accomplishment and just doing what you can do as a lone wolf and so the extroverts definitely have this type of advantage in business if the task of business involves many other people so number four advantage for extroverts synergize they like to synergize and I'm going to go to an article from smallbusiness.cron.com. Now, cron is C-H-R-O-N. Small business, one, one word, dot cron, C-H-R-O-N, dot com. And there is an article there called The Advantages, the Advantages of Extrovert Employees Over Introverts. And according to this article 75 percent of people of the population in the world are likely classified as extroverts so with extroverts seeking other extroverts to synergize there's a lot of there's a lot of source of people for extroverts to synergize with there's a greater pool of the population for extroverts to mingle with other extroverts and do their extroverting and uh, synergize and extroverts like to get more like to get more than themselves doing things they like to organize people extroverts are likely to figure out more how to get people to interact and work on a team and so if there's a project that requires one person to do x another person to do y another person to do z and they all work on part of it and the the part the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts then you can thank extroverts for being more likely to be able to make that happen and so here's another case where in the business world in entrepreneurship the extroverts have the advantage of being able to get things done together as a team and they can motivate people to work and motivate people to get their part done and motivate communication that brings about that greater whole, that finished project. So thank you, extroverts, for making this possible. And last, but certainly not least, because of all this, extroverts statistically earn more money at least you know some articles might say that introverts earn more others might say that extroverts earn more and and obviously this is a statistical thing i would not say and no article is going to suggest that all extroverts earn more than all introverts nor that all extroverts have a greater chance individually of earning more than any given individual extra introvert um, it really depends on other factors if, if say if an extrovert likes to be um, clownish all the time and likes to uh, waste valuable productive time just socializing that would not be conducive for earning money if they're uh, uh, foregoing the work that's due for them and likewise a, an introvert might be a big thinker might be more uh, technical in and more studied in advanced mathematics and most likely engineers and uh, laboratory scientists and computer scientists and those who um, do that kind of technical work often earn a lot more money than say like an extroverted janitor who likes to talk to all, all of his co-workers while he's sleep, sweeping the floor but if you were to take a sample size of a thousand extroverts and a thousand introverts, likely you're going to get the extroverts earning more money because they're really um, getting lots more people to like them. Extroverts have leadership traits, and this is what I got from 
a website called Inc.com. That's I-N-C.com, like incorporated.com. And there's this article from Inc.com called Four Advantages Extroverts Have Over Introverts at Work. And one of these advantages is that extroverts more likely have leadership traits that lead to higher positions in a business. So when you ask yourself the question, who is likely more going to be a manager? Who is going to fill a manager position? Who is going to be trusted with managing lots of people? Well, that is likely going to fall onto the extrovert, where an introvert would be less prone to talking with lots of co-workers and trying to organize them to work together because the introvert's only uh, most likely going to care about his or her own output. The management skill is likely going to fall onto the extroverts for organizing teams and seeing that big picture that involves lots of people putting their heads together doing their parts and an manager has the social skills necessary to help people work together and these are leadership traits that will help in extroverts get into management positions. So when we consider this statistically, if extroverts earn more, yet I mentioned in the last episode that one potential pitfall of extroverts could be that they're likely to spend more. Well, then doesn't that even things out? Maybe an introvert might earn less and spend less. An extrovert might earn more and and spend more. Of course, that's not a hard and fast rule. There, there could be extroverts who are, who earn a lot more money and are frugal. And that's a really good thing. And introverts who are engineers who earn a lot of money and are frugal, that that's a good thing too. But let's say that an extrovert is really good at seeking out ways to earn money by doing more socially demanding skills and the extrovert is also uh, someone who likes to spend money on high fashion and social events and eating out at eating out lunch during um, business work days a lot more well depending on your economic persuasion your school of economics especially if you're if you think like a what's called a Keynesian economist, this is actually win-win because you're contributing to the economy. You're earning lots of money. You're being highly productive. And then if you're spending lots of money, then you're making the economy run from two different ends. Now, I will say I myself am not a Keynesian economist. I am very against Keynesian economics. I hail from... Uh, the tradition of the Austrian school, um, say Karl Menger, Ludwig von Mises, Murray Rothbard, and some uh, people who carry that tradition out into modern days. And I mentioned Thomas Woods as a um, an example of an entrepreneur who has a degree in liberal arts in um, s- uh, several episodes ago, and he's He's actually, I believe, he's pretty extroverted. And so his extroversion in teaching and going out in different events and doing so many different things, writing, podcasting, speaking, marketing, you know, his extroversion really helps him there a lot. But as an extrovert, Thomas Woods is is a diehard uh, economist of the Austrian tradition and not the Keynesian tradition. But, you know, this type of discussion on different schools of economics is a topic for another episode. But what I am trying to say is that an extrovert who earns a lot and spends a lot, at least in some indirect way, is making the economy run. And so that would that can be considered a very much win-win situation for extroverts. So, 
In conclusion, let me reiterate the five advantages that extroverts will have over introverts, and these are basically statistical. These are not true of every individual extrovert versus every individual introvert. But statistically speaking, extroverts are more likely happier. Extroverts are more likely to be outwardly health conscious. Number three, extroverts are lo more likely to create wider networks in business, which helps business out. Number four, extroverts are more likely to synergize with other people. And that gets a lot more work done. And then, last but not least, number five, extroverts statistically earn more. So... Maybe there is something good to say about being energy vampires and leeches. Now, as an introvert, I would say that um, extroverts can be exhausting on an introvert who wants to focus more inward, wants to think more, wants to produce more via the imagination and can get overly stimulated with an extrovert wanting to... Um, do a lot of small talk. So, I will conclude this episode with advice for extroverts and then advice for introverts. So, here is my advice for extroverts from, from the perspective of being an introvert. Extroverts really need to understand the needs of introverts. Please understand that introverts need to recharge. And there's actually science, scientific studies about the, the shape of brains of extroverts versus introverts and the level of gray matter in between certain parts of the brain that have to do with the way introverts process information before they get uh, before they deal with the outside world there's more gray matter in between the way uh, when an introvert receives information for that for that uh, information to pass through more gray matter to get to the way the introvert wants to deal with it on the outside world. So just understand that, that that function of the brain for an introvert means that an introvert is uh, can get overstimulated with outside information or outside activities very easily because they process things more deeply. When when an introvert receives information, the introvert really wants to mull over it, really wants to process it, really wants to get something out of it. And so if an introvert is bombarded with all this outside stimulus, think of it like it's, it's almost like you know, rubbing fing or fingernails on a chalkboard sometimes because the inf introvert has to be able to take the time to deal with all of that stimulus. And for the extroverts, just because an introvert does not have a very bubbly personality and is not as bubbly as you might want the introvert to be in dialogue, it doesn't mean that the introvert is angry, it doesn't mean the introvert hates you or is upset or anything like that. It's just that the introvert is most likely thinking and processing more. And, you know, as you think more and internally, that most likely leads to not expressing a very bubbly smile all the time on your face because an introvert is thinking more and and if you're processing information it doesn't necessarily make you just smile so much all the time it doesn't mean the introvert is unhappy okay so that's my advice for extroverts just try to be a little understanding give an introvert a little more space if an introvert kind of indicates that he or she just needs a little bit of time to recharge and think it's it's it is not a slap in the face 
It's not that the introvert has anything against the extrovert. It just the introvert just wants the extrovert to understand uh, the introvert's needs. The introvert can easily get overwhelmed with lots of outside stimulus. And now here is my advice for introverts. Introverts realize that extroverts are not trying to be energy vampires or leeches. Extroverts are not out to get you or to try to push you in situations where you would feel very uncomfortable so that they can laugh at you. Most extroverts are really care about you. They are generally trying to be happy and they are trying to make their happiness uh, drive they are trying to make their happiness be contagious. They, they're happy. They want you to be happy. And to an extrovert, functioning means being happy. And so if they see an, ex, an introvert who doesn't look like they have a bubbly smile on his face or her face, the extrovert might think that you are having a bad day or um, you you don't feel well or you're stressed out about something. So an extrovert might want to know what's the problem. So if an extrovert asks you what's the problem as an introvert and you really don't have a problem, you just don't feel like wearing a plastered smile on your face because it hurts your facial muscles and you, you feel like you have to fake it to make a smile because you're perfectly happy and you don't need to show it with a big you know, muscle tensing smile, just be considerate that, you know, the extrovert is not trying to prod you. They're not trying to embarrass you, most likely. Um, the extra realize that the extrovert might not realize that what you might consider bubbly fluff <laughs> via um, small talk and lots of facts that come out that are really irrelevant to things um, that kind of bubbly fluff you know doesn't make you happy the way it makes the extroverts happy they they might be happy talking about you know how their dog likes to fetch over and over again and do silly things that you might think go without saying you know, for example, something like that, but it's not that the extrovert is trying to rub your face in something that's irrelevant. You know, just be considerate. Introverts and extroverts think differently and they might be entertained or made happy by different things. And so introverts um, try not to be uh, mean or, you know, blow up at an extrovert because they seem like they're in their face. If you you know, just be considerate and let, you know, as introverts, we're good listeners. So if you need to just perk up and listen and let the extrovert pour out their life story um, of their life over the past five minutes, then let them do that. And then, you know, you're both happy. If you got through it, the extrovert got through it. Now you're good. So now, also, advice for introverts. Extroverts might want to get you to participate in a lot of loud, boisterous, or otherwise um, exciting social activities that you might not want to... That They don't sound like lots of fun, and you, you'd feel more comfortable just being at home, watching a some kind of movie, or being on your computer or your phone, and and doing research or something like that. So as a good compromise, tell your extroverted friend that you could come to a few of them. You know, you might have to do one out of 10 or something like that. But, you know, just try coming to one little event here and there. And you never know, there might be something there that you might enjoy. You just, you just might enjoy yourself. And, you might actually make a good friend and there might even be another introvert who can become a good friend. Or, of course, introverts, you could make friends with extroverts. So, you know, try to come out of your comfort zone and do a little bit here and there to try to grow and expand your per 
horizons. Expand your horizons. And the better you get, introverts, the better you get at displaying extroverted characteristics, then the greater of your chances of job promotions. So that's just a little bit of advice. Extroverts, please understand the needs of introverts. Introverts, please understand the needs of extroverts. And as there's more understanding, there can be more working together because the world definitely needs both of us. Thank you for waking up with Truth Espresso. Good morning, and God bless your day. Hey friends, Daniel Minnick here again. If you liked waking up to this episode of Truth Espresso, I would really appreciate it if you would rate it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever application you use to listen to Truth Espresso.